Good evening. Uh, I'm Andres Lozano. I'm a uh, professor of neurosurgery at the University of Toronto, and I work at Toronto Western Hospital, and I'll be speaking about deep brain stimulation for treatment-resistant depression. Some depression facts first. So depression occurs in, all, uh, in persons of all genders, ages, and background. It's more common in women than in men, and depression is one of the leading causes of disability worldwide. And in fact, it contributes to the 800 thousand or so suicides uh, that occur worldwide every year. Now, depression can, of course, be treated, and there are medications, there's talk therapy, there's even electroconvulsive therapy. But despite that, there are some patients in the order of 10 to 20 percent with depression that are still disabled, despite all these available treatments. These patients are said to have treatment-resistant depression, and these are the patients that we're interested in, these treating these patients that have failed all other conventional therapies. Now, we have uh, done some studies on brain activity in uh, depression, and we've uh, discovered that in uh, patients with depression, there are striking abnormalities in the brain activity. Specifically, we can do a PET scan and measure the brain uh, activity, and the red areas are areas that are overactive compared to control, and the blue areas are areas that are underactive. And what we've discovered is that in patients with severe depression, the areas of the brain that are involved in sadness are on overdrive. So these are seen in red and in singular area 25, CG25. So this, it's as if the thermostat in your home is set to 50 degrees Celsius instead of 20 degrees, and it's stuck there. There's no way to move it. It's always stuck at this high level. So the sadness area is on overdrive, and other areas of the brain are underperforming. The areas in blue, these are the areas that are involved in motivation and drive, and this is why patients with depression lack, uh, are withdrawn and lack motivation and drive because these areas of the brain are shut down. So what we want to do is use deep brain stimulation to implant electrodes in these areas, specifically in area 25, this overactive area, to see if we can turn it down and to see whether that in turn uh, leads to improvement in the depression in our patients. So this is done by implanting electrodes in the brain and hooking up the electrodes to a pacemaker. And we're able with a remote control to regulate how much current uh, is delivered to the brain. And the current is delivered 24 uh, seven. And so those batteries last about five years and we're able to then change the batteries if needed. What we've discovered is by implanting electrodes in area 25 is that indeed one can turn down this area. One can turn down the dimmer switch or the thermostat if you like from 50 degrees back down to 20 degrees. And so we see in the top that before surgery, area 25 was red. And after the surgery, we see it turns to blue. And that means that we're able to turn down the activity in this area. And then the areas of the brain that were previously shut down in blue on the top of the screen now come back online, they turn to red. And this indicates that they now start working once again. So we're able to reverse the abnormalities in the brain circuitry function in the brain. This is associated with improvements in their depression. So we've now looked at over 170 patients worldwide that have received this uh, procedure, patients with severe depression. And what we see is that after six months, about 30% of them are better. After a year, uh, uh, also about 40% are better. And after two years, about 50% of them are better. And we consider them to be better if they've improved by at least 50% on the depression scale. So it looks like after one or two years, you get about a 50% uh, improvement in the depression in these patients with severe depression that have failed all other treatments. So in conclusion then, this procedure of implanting DBS electrodes in the brain in patients with depression appears to be safe. One can adjust the activity of the brain in the circuits involved in depression using electricity. It appears that DBS is effective in the long run we know that the location of where we put these electrodes and how much electricity we deliver is important. We also know that choosing correct patients is also very important. Where we are now is that this procedure needs to be evaluated by the regulatory bodies and they have to determine whether it's safe and effective and whether they think there's enough evidence to approve it as a therapy. And if so, it may mean that we now have a new therapy to treat these patients who have severe depression and have failed all other conventional therapies. Thank you very much for your attention.